Hey guys, Henry here from Adventure Air, and what we're gonna to do today is some of you have asked to see an oil change for the Autogyro Cavalon. So we have our super mechanic, Walter, right here. Woo, give us a wave, Walter. If I can get no it. wave, there you go. <laughs> Walter's gonna be doing the oil change, gonna show you how uh, easy it is to do. And uh, remember, if you have a certified aircraft, uh, you're supposed to have a mechanic do the oil change. Uh, if you're experimental, you can probably do it yourself. But uh, Walter's gonna go through all the steps of the oil change and it's gonna be very important. You have to remove the cowling. The upper cowling is pretty easy to do because it just takes a regular Phillips head screwdriver. The lower cowling, we have to use a 2.5 metric uh, to uh, take that off. But the, the top part uh, has just these little quick, uh, quick releases on. All right, so what, uh, what we're doing is uh, this engine we have on this model, this is two Papa Golf has uh, the Rotex 915. It's 141 horsepower, fuel injected, turbocharged. Oh, there it is. It's a beautiful engine. Uh, we've got 1100 hours on this engine, so uh, we've used this one pretty well. And it's still pretty clean. All right, so we're gonna take off the lower cowling here. Ready? Yeah. Guys, it's always remember the last two to take out of the top two because you don't want this uh, cowling swing open again, cracking and all that. So, all right, you got it? Yep. He's got it. Is that what we do next? Yeah. All right, so we're gonna burp the engine next, and again, here's the oil container here, and it's about two and a half quarts, so it's not a whole lot of oil on the engine here. And I just blew it, so we'll see how hot it is. That's no, not too bad. Choop, that there. And see, it looks like the oil's down here low, and it is kind of dirty, but we are gonna burp the engine. And again, you want to turn the prop uh, counterclockwise, the direction it travels, and we just do it slowly. What that does is any engine that's in the bottom of the crank, it's going to fill up and it's going to fill up this oil can to give us an accurate oil reading. Do you hear the bloop? That's right. That's the famous Rotex bloop. So I drop the dipstick back down into the oil. I find kind of a cleanish spot on my rag here. Now you can see there's a lot of oil in the flat there. About halfway is uh, perfect, but I say so that might even be a little much, but we're gonna drain all the oil anyway. We've got Rocky the Wonder Dog here. Rocker. And uh, we're about to take the oil container canister <laughs> out, and then uh, that's an easy way for us to drain the oil. Right, Rocky? Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. All right, so Walter is gonna show us all how to do it the easy way. What kind of tools are you using to do that? A 19 millimeter wrench to hold the nut that's welded to the canister and a crescent for the top of the 14 for the turbo line. Two copper crush washers need to be replaced. Now those part of a kit or do they you can buy them from Rotax for like 80 bucks each or what? You can get them from a hardware store, just get the right size, they're in metric. Thank 
Yeah. Tighten the straps now for the can. Yeah, let's the uh, straps. Hose clamps to hold it down. So the way to actually drain it is down here, but there's no clearance when it sits in the body. So this is easier and cleaner. So it really is the only way to, to drain the oil. You need to use a pump, reopen the top portion, get a pump in there, but you have to do this every 200 hours to inspect the bottom of the canister anyway, so might as well get used to it. Does this add any time to your to the oil change at all anyways? Yeah. Uh, two minutes of anything. So you ended the clamp now, what are you looking for? So I'm gonna remove the top, the pump, actual pump portion of the canister and the screen and empty it out. So what's that screen for? The oil tends to foam when it's coming back into the canister and this helps it pull from the less foamy side, which okay. is in the middle. And also if there's any particles that you don't want to get in. Are you looking for anything when you're emptying the oil out? Or? No, at the moment, uh, once it's empty, I look at the bottom of the canister and see if there's any metal particles that came out of the engine. Hopefully not, shouldn't be. This is where the screen sits, top of there, and anything that would be sucked in sits underneath the bottom of the canister. Looking for any shiny material. There's a little bit of carbon, which is normal. But anything shiny is bad. Yeah. Nothing shiny today. Nothing shiny today. So just a little bit of carbon, but that's, that's normal. Then just put it back together. Basically, you're just wiping down all the old oil off. And yeah, just getting rid of all the old stuff. It's not going to hurt the engine or anything, but it's nice to have it clean. And you can see if there's anything in here, but it looks good. Is that lid oriented to any certain position? It used to be um, 
on nine fourteen models, there was a temperature sensor on the canister itself, and you had a just oriented canister to where the sensor is. But here, it's there's none. You just more just trying to fit the, uh, the label so it faces outward and you can see it. Just fit the label out, and then you could turn it when you put it back into the plane. Okay. So really, it's just for aesthetic reasons, and, and you know. Yeah, like just yeah, it's a warning, so okay. nobody touches it because it is pretty hot. So it sits like this. So this is a good position. That's just the feed line goes back in there on top. Yeah, so this is the out out of the engine and then Oh that's the outline? This is the outline. Okay. These two back ones are in from the engine underneath here. And it's better to seat these lines with this loose so that you can move it around and then it'll sit where it's supposed to once you have them snug down. Okay. So basically you're just hand tightening everything at this point? Just for now, and then once I have it, everything seated right, then I'll torque it down. Oh, do you want so you got the lines back in, and you torque them down to the manufacturer's recommendation, which should be in the line maintenance manual or the heavy maintenance manual. Um, it's gotta be some clearance between the bottom of the canister and the fuel pumps here. So just check. You could feel for it and then once you have it where it's supposed to go, tighten these hose clamps back up. And those are just hand tight, right? Yeah. So then we have your three liters of Aeroshell Sport Plus 4. So it's good to fill the canister before removing the filter and checking the mag plug. Um, there's talks that if you do that with no oil in the canister, it becomes like a vacuum and just siphons out all the gas. Um, and if you move the prop while you're, this is empty, also you're introducing air into the system. So once you have oil in here, that problem is gone. All right, now that we have oil back in the canister, we can remove the filter. Let that drain a bit. Go so, and then you should cut open your oil filter using a oil filter cutting tool and pour it through a 190 micron, I believe. It's paint filter with some acetone or paint thinner just to kind of see if there's any particles inside of here. And 
while we have the filter off, we can check the mag plug. To remove the safety wire. This is a 16 milliliter, 16 millimeter, <laughs> 16 millimeter um, socket. A little bit of train there. So oil comes out of the Mac plug too? Just a little bit. Sometimes it doesn't. Are you looking for anything on the mag plug when you're So you're looking for any big particles. There's like this. I'm just gonna turn the power on. Yeah, almost like sand is okay. Let me just clean it up. So we checked the mag plug, everything looks good. Put it back in and torque that down. Also should be in the line maintenance manual, heavy maintenance manual. And use safety wire as well. So everything's torqued back down, uh, manufacturer specs, safety wire. The filter, it'll tell you here. Turn it till the gasket touches the um, pump there. And then you go three quarters of a turn after that. So it's touching there. And you could use anything as a guide. The Rotax is basically straight up. So we'll want it to see it on this side. And that's your three quarters. And that's an oil change. Like, how easy was that? <laughs> right, Walter? Yeah. yeah. All right. All right, so we're ready for our next flight. Uh, so until next time, if you guys have any comments, please leave them below. Uh, and also, if there's somebody else that you want to see in one of our future uh, videos, please let us know that as well. In the meantime, we will see ya.